First of all, I want to thank my distinguished panel for joining me today to discuss a very important topic. Um, Senator Chris Dodd, Chief Executive Officer of Motion Picture Association of America. Ellen Elizoff, President of Village Roadshow Pictures Asia, based in Beijing. Rich Gelfon, co-founder of IMAX. And Jerry Yi, General Manager and member of the board of Wanda Circuit Line. In 2002, Warner Brothers opened its first multiplex cinema in China, in Shanghai. Uh, we created four joint ventures in China because of the complexity of the country. Our job was to transfer knowledge, teach, construction of cinemas, the operations of cinemas, and the food operations within a cinema. Back then, the price of a ticket was 25 RMB, and the rent on the building worked out to about 10% of the box office. No base minimum rent. Those were the fun days. Today, you look at what's going on in the tier one cities and the amount of building going on, and the ticket price is somewhere in the high side of 65 to 130. And average ticket prices in other cities are around 30 to 40 RMB. When you compare that with the US, the average ticket price here is $7.96. The average minimum wage in the US is $7.25. So the equivalent of about one hour to buy one ticket. In China, it's a little bit more expensive to go to the movies. It runs about three to four hours of labor for one ticket. So, as we watch this country grow and develop its cinemas, and I've been talking to Jerry for the last couple of days, he has taken a concept and has exploded with it. <laughs> Beautiful theaters, dynamic theaters, great programs, uh, loyalty programs, which he'll tell you all about. But we also have to, I believe, make sure that we don't forget about the little guy that wants to see the cinema, wants to go to the movies, and not buy it, the pirated DVD. So my opening question to Senator Dodd, as the head of the MPAA, what is the role of your organization in working with China? Well, first of all, th is that on? You hear me? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for, for inviting me to participate. And Peter, congratulations. That was very concise. and. Uh, and uh, a very informative and uh, a clear presentation about, uh, about China. And if you didn't know it before your presentation, uh, the, the first, I think, one point we can all agree on is, is this is an exciting place to be. And, and China is growing, and it's gonna create incredible opportunities uh, in the years ahead. And so you begin there. Whatever else we may talk about and discuss and debate about how we get to that great future, uh, it is a remarkable market, uh, a sophisticated market, uh, that enjoys it, this product, whether it's a domestic product, Chinese product, or a foreign product, uh, made here in the United States or elsewhere. So that's uh, very exciting. The job of the MPA, first of all, we have great people to begin with uh, uh, that represent the interests of the six studios that I represent uh, in the Asian Pacific Theater. Uh, Mike Ellis, who runs our programs there. William Fang, who runs specifically the program in China. Highly qualified, knowledgeable people who've been there for years. And so they really understand the market, they understand the history, they understand the problems that have existed in the past. And that's critical. I think in any discussion about going forward, you have to have knowledgeable, well-informed people who know the history, know the background, and know where things are today. And so the MPAA is very fortunate to have talented people who understand all of that to begin with. And secondly is to engage uh, uh, the community. We believe in open markets. I mean, that's been uh, a, a sort of a hallmark of, the, of this industry from the very beginning. It's a very democratic process. I talking about the democracy of film earlier today. Uh, and we believe in open markets, where markets are open and people have a chance to engage in the competition, if you will, for an audience. We all do well. Uh, and so the remarks that I, I share with you, while you might assume I'm speaking on behalf of the six studios I represent, if, if I'd been hired and asked to represent China's interests here at this forum today, I'd be making the very points I'm making on behalf of the Motion Picture Association and the studios I represent. Because the more product there is, you grow the audience, you grow that, 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 
that habit of enjoying the product of film, whether it's a domestic or a foreign product. And you do that with an open market, a growing audience that loves this art form. Uh, you grow it by encouraging producers in China as well to recognize the opportunities, not only domestically, but internationally for a Chinese product, which we're proving over and over again is also the case. So open markets are critical uh, to us, uh, this country, the industries, uh, the companies that I represent. And, and to further those ideas, uh, again, I've only been on this job now 24 months, so the people gathered here at this, on this stage here have forgotten more in the last five minutes than I know about all of this. Uh, so let me begin by a little level of honesty here in, in the discussion. Uh, but what I've grown to appreciate in all of this is you need to engage. And uh, under the leadership of, of people like Mike Ellis, uh, we have been engaged in the process. Uh, this year, I think, and Michael got the fourth uh, such meeting we'll have uh, of the, uh, of the uh, China uh, co-production uh, film uh, meetings that we've had, bringing uh, producers, people involved in the production of Chinese film to the United States, uh, having these workshops, and again, we've had dozens of workshops in China again, bringing in young filmmakers, young uh, cinematographers, people involved in the technical aspects, engaging in that sharing of ideas, going back and forth, building those relationships, which are critically important. In fact, one of the first things I did as the new CEO of the MPAA, again, at the urging of Mike and others, was to host in Washington at the MPAA headquarters uh, of screenings of films and Chinese films. Delighted to have the ambassador from China come down. He's been several times now to the offices of the MPAA building those relationships. We went through that period last summer with the uh, periods of the double dating issues with a couple of my studios, and I think it was the Spider-Man movie and, and uh, one other uh, that uh, Dark Knight came out at the same period of time. I had already had enough of a relationship. I could call the Chinese embassy and talk to the Chinese officials and say, what's going on uh, here? So it's important to have those kind of relationships, uh, both here in the United States as well as in China, and we'll continue at that. So that's the role, in a sense, uh, of the MPAA. Uh, I've had a long meeting, just spent three or four hours with Chairman Wang of the Wanda Group when he was in Washington. Good meetings with, with Jerry and his boss and talking about the new projects and things that are developing uh, in China. And so while we'll spend some time talking about the bumps in the road and the various things that have happened, uh, I think we need to keep our eye on the ball all the time. This is a great opportunity for us, but it's also a great opportunity for China. Uh, here. We mentioned earlier, Peter did, about the three goals of the China dream. And the third one uh, here, the cultural expansion and soft power. That there be no illusions. China in the 21st century wants to be able to market itself as a great power globally. And they watched what other nations have done in the 20th century in terms of marketing themselves as great powers. And I welcome that opportunity because I think the cooperation, the co-production, uh, working together, we can develop great product for audiences globally. Uh, not just here or there, but truly throughout the, uh, without the, without the, uh, throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you, Chris.